Radio Science Report, UHF carrier detected. EDL Con, Marco Bravo, Marco Alpha is in vent type mode. Marco Bravo has locked on the carrier. Marco Alpha has also locked on carrier. System based on inside cord. As expected, the DSN has LOS for inside expand. Copy that, thank you. All station InSight systems on InSight cord. DSN has lost the X-band signal from InSight, indicated expected cruise stage separation. Standing by for UHF signal acquisition via Marco or Radio Science. We are about five minutes from entry and have confirmation we've lost the X-band signal from InSight. This was expected because we have transitioned from the antenna on the cruise stage to the UHF antenna on board the spacecraft. Ground stations have detected the UHF signal and Marco has locked on the signal. This confirms that InSight is transmitting UHF signals as expected. InSight telemetry through the Marco relay is not expected until about two minutes before entry. So, Rob, that was exactly what we were hoping to hear, that yes. the Marcos are The vehicle working. has also performed the turn to entry maneuver. The vehicle is turning away from a sun-pointing attitude and oriented itself to enter the Martian atmosphere. Uh, this is a big first step. Uh, getting, just getting the, the cruise stage separated, uh, it's now, as, after the vehicle turns itself to the right orientation, the cruise stage is now going to be uh, f get further and further away until it's about three or four football fields away and will burn up in parallel as the vehicle enters Mars. And, and Christine mentioned turn to entry. What does that mean? Well, it's because the cruise stage has to be pushed off to one side uh -huh. like this. The rest of the vehicle has to turn to face the atmosphere and to be dead nuts on as it hits hits the uh, the top of the atmosphere. So this is taking all the heat coming into the atmosphere. Exactly. It'll be both provide a source of drag, but also thermal protection because it gets over 1,500 degrees Celsius on the top of the, on this heat shield. Very very hot. Uh, but on the inside of the heat shield, it may be only a, f uh, a fraction of a few degrees above room temperature. So it's a wonderful protective device to keep our lander safe. All right, so the next thing we're standing by for is? Is entry, entry. hitting through the, going to the top of the atmosphere, gradually slowing down. Right now, the vehicle's just now beginning to, we'll, very soon, we'll be beginning to feel the atmosphere touching it. Actually, entry is above the atmosphere slightly, so it's really not until a few, uh, half a minute or so before, after entry before we start really detecting the fact that that atmosphere is slowing us down. All right, we'll be standing by. Yes, exciting. Now, entry is scheduled for 1147. 
the crew stage SEP and the entry times are locked in, correct? They are. They're locked in when we selected the target and aim the vehicle very precisely. That allows us to know exactly when we hit the entry point, which is uh, 35, 55 kilometers from the center of Mars. So we know those times are locked in, but what about all the other events that take place in EDM? Reggie Science reports dropping carrier power as com. expected. Marco A and Marco B have telemetry. Just heard, both Marcos have telemetry. They are doing their job. These small CubeSats are relaying ones and zeros uh, with a few seconds lag from from the vehicle up to the up to these two vehicles, and they re forward them back to Earth to the deep space network using X-band antennas. And, and keep in mind, this was all an experiment. We weren't sure that this was going to work, but we had this need that we didn't have live communication right. in this particular mission. Well, we don't really need communications. We don't need their information, except if something went wrong. We would very much like to get the data right now. We have other spacecraft. We are spacecraft. now receiving insight telemetry via the Marco relay. Ah, it's, it's flowing into this space. means the team now can watch the data flowing onto their screens as if they're communicating directly with the vehicle. This data will provide detailed information about the state of the spacecraft throughout EDL. We were on pins and needles waiting for that because we weren't really sure. Uh, this is wonderful news. Uh, this, this will allow us to give some, uh, if this continues working uh, all the way to the ground and beyond, uh, w we might even see uh, a first picture from the surface of Mars. Wouldn't that be great? Very soon. Atmospheric entry on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Here we go. So in a few seconds, the vehicle will start sensing the atmosphere. I said 35, 22 kilometers from the center of Mars. And it's going to start to slow down very, very slowly at first, so but then faster and faster and faster till uh, to, to reaches about 7 Gs. I made that mistake on the video. It's actually 7 <laughs> Gs, not 12. Uh, and so it, it will, it, but we'll still very, very quickly slow down. And, uh, and, and from 15. In approximately one minute, inside is expected to reach its maximum heating rate. Oh, yes. Plasma blackout is possible during peak heating and could cause a temporary dropout of telemetry. This could last for as long as two minutes. Yeah, the, the gas that comes off the heat shield as it's slowing down, it looks like a meteor if you're on Mars watching the streak go by. That brightness of gas does interfere with the radio reception. And so it's possible that uh, Marco will lose that signal while it's going through this very hot entry. But not to be alarmed. Not to be alarmed. It's, it's part of the design. We, we, we completely expect it. Radio science reports plasma blackout as expected. Okay. Oh, wow. Ground stations have reported plasma blackout. Still receiving insight telemetry via Marco. Marco Alpha has carrier interruption. Insight should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Portions of the heat shield may reach nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it protects the lander from the heating environment. That's hot. Awesome. Marco Bravo shows carrier interruption but still in lock. Insight has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about 8 G. Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo maintain lock. Radio science reports carrier detected. Yeah. So, several different communications coming in. Insight is now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. Seems to have passed this very critical point of peak heating and peak deceleration. The next big step is parachute inflation. 
And you can see that on our timeline on the bottom of the screen. The next event is parachute deploy. Insight is now traveling at 1,000 meters per second. Very close. Once InSight slows to about 400 meters per second, it will deploy its 12-meter diameter supersonic parachute. The parachute will deploy nominally at about Mach 1.7. Standing by for parachute deploy. Radio science reports sudden change in Doppler. Ground stations are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Marco Alpha, Marco Bravo, maintain lock status. Telemetry shows parachute deployment. Radar powered on. Heat shield separation commanded. This is really good news so far. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm on pins and needles. Yes. We have radar activation where the radar is beginning to search for the ground. Once the radar locks on the ground and inside is about one kilometer above the surface, the lander will separate from the back shell and begin terminal descent using its 12 descent engines. Altitude convergence, the radar has locked on the ground. Yes. <laughs> Standing by for lander separation. Carrier interruption on Marco Alpha and Marco Bravo. Lander separation commanded. Yes. Altitude 600 meters. Gravity turn, altitude 400 meters. We're getting there. 300 meters. 200 meters, 80 meters, 60 meters, 50 meters, constant velocity, 37 meters, 30 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters, standing by for touchdown. Touchdown confirmed. Just erupted. Fabulous, fabulous. Big hands with the Marco, the Marco team there. Christine, <laughs> you did great. Tim Prizer, one of the key designers at Lockheed. Sandy Krasner, what, what a great team. What a great team. This is really fabulous. Fantastic news. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lots of fist bumping going on in there. What a relief. We've cut over to the camera over in Times Square. Boy, people are weathering the rain to see this.
<laughs> they can't help. This is, this is the hardest part. Getting to the surface of Mars is very hard. This thing has a lot more to do, though. Uh, it's there's a lot more to, to go on both today and the, and the days that follow before the science can begin. But you know, just getting a vehicle on from Earth to the surface of Mars is no mean feat. And, and Rob, could you talk about that? I mean, just the mere accomplishment here that we're seeing. It, it's you have to understand that this 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 vehicle is very it's very complicated. Um, it uses 12 engines. Each of those engines are pulsed 10 times a second, producing these little tiny uh, impulses, almost like little bullets that keep the vehicle uh, going at a constant velocity as it, as it approaches the ground and still going o over five miles an hour. So those legs feel a fair amount of crush. We still don't know the state of the vehicle right now. We need to look to make sure there are no rocks nearby. The solar panels have to, are, will be in just, in just a few, uh, in about five to 10 minutes, will begin to open up. They have to waiting for the dust to settle because the dust were, was certainly a lot of dust being lifted in the air around the vehicle right now, which is now just settling. So we're standing by after touchdown. It waits um, a, a couple of minutes to give us an X band beep. And so we are standing by for that. It's a communication that comes directly to Earth from InSight. Yes. Um, and, and it goes uh, to the Deep Space Network. There's also something that might be happening now if we're very lucky. Uh, InSight might be able to relay uh, a, an image or a parcel image taken just a few a couple of minutes after landing. So I'm standing by hoping to see that. But if that doesn't happen, we'll certainly get more images later uh, in our Odyssey Pass in well, about five hours. We see Bruce Banner waiting for it. They're, 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 they're I don't for, know if they see it yet. They're waiting. That's, that's Justin Mackey and Bruce Banner uh, looking carefully at the cameras to see what they might see. Uh, they're now, waiting for the image to come back. So this is the first image from InSight itself. InSight Correct. is taking a picture with one yes. of its two cameras. Yes. It's probably a uh, view of what's directly in front yes. of the spacecraft, right yes. in front of the lander. This is a camera that it would be using to figure out, is this a good space? Exactly. Is it a good place to put down our instruments? So it is going to take an image and then send that image to the Marcos. The Marcos, in turn, will relay it back down to Earth. That's correct. They got it. Oh, now let's, let's, let's just wait. Let's see what they saw. There it is. Whoa, what? So it's great. I don't see a it's lot of. Uh, I don't see a lot of. Uh, Let's explain that image. Now this image has a dust cover on top EDL of it. EDL com. We have so lost the signal for Marco. You can see potentially a lot of. Uh, so, uh, radio science uh, reports uh, might be uh, on the camera. For UHF. So we don't know what I'm looking Thank at. Thank you, everybody on EDL com. All right. Yeah. Yay, Marco. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, there it is. You can see a better view. You can see that really is debris. And there is the horizon back there, um, the bluish sky. Uh, um, that's part of the lander deck on the front left. Um, I can't take out, but it looks like there's not a lot of rocks in the field of view. But those dots you see there are very likely to be dust particles on the, on the lens, the dust cover, the dust which cover. will be removed. After, and we'll and get moved. another shot yes. later on. Yes, um, and amazing. a better, clearer view after the dust cutter is removed. So, um, it, uh, Insights, um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, 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 CubeSat's relay communications job is done. They're now flying on. They're now taking pictures back of, toward Mars. Uh, uh, hopefully, MRO, which flew overhead, might have been lucky enough to capture 
the descent of this InSight lander on its, under its parachute. Uh, while, was, while, while this was going on, it, MRO was flying overhead recording the data, uh, um, like a, also monitoring the tra transactions and recording every bit of signal it could. And, but it also had the ability to take a picture. And maybe we'll, like we did with, with uh, both Phoenix and later for Curiosity rover, we might be able to see the parachute inflated That as well. would be fantastic. We are standing by now for that X-band beat. Yes. Insight phoning home saying, I'm here and I'm okay.